All right, today we're here to talk about tension. And while many people think they need to get away from tension, we actually want to harness tension and get leverage and direction and use in our favor. Now, when the system's out of balance, as we talk about with the neck alignment, and as the body comes back into balance by balancing the head, the body uses static tension to hold itself together. Now, static tension is when one side is tight and one side is loose. And the body will do one side tight, one side loose. It'll do the other side tight and the other side loose. But when the body's been out of balance and it's compensating for itself, one side is short because it's out of balance. The second side is short holding people together. The third side shortens to hold them up. And now we desperately in our society are trying to use our abdominals and the fourth side short to hold things together. And it just never really works. So as we start to work with that, instead of using one side short, one side long, we start to talk about a concept of dynamic tension, which is when you lengthen the short side, and contract both sides together. Now, that creates a lot of stability in the body. So instead of holding myself up, I drop the tailbone, relax the stomach muscles, and as I engage both sides long, there's a lot of solidness here. Now, that's a good way to reset the nervous system, and we use that in our relaxation procedures, and our rock and roll, and the end of the day procedures. And we also use this dynamic tension as a place to eventually move into resistance training so that we're using our own body's resistance and building strength from the true core which comes up through the center of the body. Now, the trouble with dynamic tension is once you've engaged it, there's really no movement involved or allowed. So we get into a concept called oppositional strain where one side is externally rotating, one side is internally rotating. And that allows tension and movement to coincide. And that moves us from dynamic tension into what we call tensegrity. Now, tensegrity comes into play a lot more in yoga-like movements and sports activities, where as you move toward the basket or as you run or as you're doing yoga, there's an external rotation opposing an internal rotation, but without losing the connectedness and the solid connection to the ground, which is how we harness energy from the ground through our bones, into our muscles, tissues, and organs. So once again, we have static tension holding us up, shifting that into dynamic tension for more support and more connectedness to the ground, also as a reference for resistance training. Then we use oppositional strain and tension to go into something of tensegrity, where we can take that into yoga and sports-like activities. And these all come into play with sitting standing. We've talked about taking a step back. We've talked about shoulders down and back and the walking pose. So these principles will come through almost all of the foundational movement practices and we look forward to having you understand those at a deeper level on future videos.